so it's the big question, right? Everybody's talking about Andre Kuzmenko. Everybody's talking about the first time the Vancouver Canucks have actually signed a quote-unquote highly touted free agent. I can name a few free agent signings that the Canucks had had. You have Radim Verbata back in 20, what the heck was that, 2014, 15. That was a really good signing. The guy was the last 30 goal scorer the Canucks had for seven years. Ryan Miller in, I believe, the same offseason was also a good signing because he was legitimately good. And I feel like he kind of slowed down the Canucks' ability to rebuild for a few years. There are a few names that pop up throughout history that are a little bit more significant than others, but for the sake of comparing just the emotion, the feelings, and the salt from the other fan bases, Andre Kuzmenko is a guy that I think the Vancouver Canucks have struck gold with in terms of reputation. I can't name the last time they signed a regular free agent that was bidded on by other teams, and other teams' fan bases wanted this guy so bad, and now all these fan bases are going out there and saying, huh, he's not really that good anyway. Vancouver got a bust because they're just kind of butthurt that their team did not sign this guy. But before we go over Andre Kuzmenko and talk about how good he is going to be, I wanted to bring up a few more tweets just going over the contract negotiation process and what some analysts and the agent himself actually said about Kuzmenko's decision to sign with Vancouver. This is, firstly, not for many of those parties. This is what Vasily Podkolzin said about Kuzmenko signing in Vancouver. I'm happy that Andre joined us. We're very well acquainted for a long time, and we played together before, sometimes even as line mates. He's a great player and a great person. The quote here is courtesy of Igor Iranko, so I'm not sure if Pod Colson said this quote in English or Russian, but either way, it's cool to see that that was the case. We also had Dan Milstein, who was interviewed on Donnie and Dolly for the same segment talking about the same player. This is one of the things that he said about the fan base in Vancouver. One of the fans went through Andre's video and made a very nice scouting report with lots of video. I forwarded it to Andre, and he was impressed. The reason I'm showing you this tweet from Daniel G. Scouting is because Daniel over here is one of the very, very well-equipped journalists in this city that does great scouting work. And he made a video about Andre Kuzmenko. Even if it wasn't Daniel G., it could have been Daniel Wagner who did the same thing. So, Canucks fans, Canucks media, collaborating with each other, talking about this one player, begging this guy on social media to sign in Vancouver... I guess it kind of worked. I mean, that's great. According to Kuzmenko's agent, also on Donnie and Dolly, he was very impressed with Vancouver Canucks fans. Obviously, he's not coming to Vancouver for good weather and good sushi. Yeah, I mean, the sushi's pretty all right. I don't really have too many complaints about that. There also was a story, an anecdote, about how when Kuzmenko went to Alvin's office, he asked for a lemon with water. Dan Milstein joked that they don't have any lemons. Milstein and Kuzmenko went for lunch, and on the way back, Kuzmenko went to buy lemons for Alvin as a joke. When they arrived at the office, the Canucks already had a bowl full of lemons. The reason this quote is significant is because when Kevin Weeks broke the news on his Twitter account, you know, he's making the funny videos of him selfie videoing in weird locations, he talked specifically in the breaking news video about how the lemons are there and there are a lot of lemons and everything, and a lot of people, myself included, saw this video at first and were like, what the hell is he talking about? But I guess that's where it's coming from, because Kuzmenko wanted lemons, the Canucks joked around with the guy saying that he needed lemons and everything. Elliot Friedman said this on the 32 Thoughts podcast about Kuzmenko. I heard that he loved being wined and dined. And that is another thing that a lot of Canucks fans, myself included, were saying, hey, the Canucks have an advantage over all the other teams here because... Take a look at this. Joey's was the location where they did the negotiating and they took him out to dinner in Edmonton. In Vancouver, as we said, Eliza, Blue Water Cafe, two Aquilini-owned establishments where the food is so expensive and they're so close to each other, too. It's a completely different experience. Now, I know we like to meme about things like this, but I did see somewhere I can't actually find a source or a tweet that maybe Kuzmenko already had it in his mind, decided that Vancouver was going to be the destination, and he just went to the other cities, Edmonton, and then, of course, Vancouver as a formality because he was so impressed by the Boudreaux driving six hours thing earlier on, which actually does play a very big part in these sort of negotiations over here. But when you go over to some of the other things, this is what Dan Milstein said on the rumors that Kuzmenko was going to get guaranteed ice time in Vancouver. He is coming to camp. No promises, no guarantee. He will earn his ice. 
Darren Dreger, though, replied to this tweet, saying, obviously, there's no guarantee of ice time or a spot in the lineup, etc. However... Dan Milstein clarified this morning the teams most interested in the final push did pitch him Kuzmenko on the opportunity to play top six with the power play. It's because those teams see him as a top six player. Now, this is kind of why I'm making this video. How good is Kuzmenko really going to be? If you go over different analysts and different people who have watched this guy, we can make a few assumptions as to where he is going to play, and we can also make some great assumptions about Russian players at times, fair or unfair. This is what John Shannon said on the Sakaris and Price show. This guy is the real deal. Work ethic and his finish are the two things that are going to jump out. We also had ourselves what Jim Rutherford said about Kuzmenko. This is exciting for us. We added the number one free agent in Russia. He is skilled, smart, good in the power play. We feel good about it. The city of Vancouver. We had a lot to offer. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people going out there and throwing names like... Okay, other free agent signings from the KHL. Artemi Panarin, firstly, he was really good with the Chicago Blackhawks when he came over. You have Vadim Shipachev, who signed with the Golden Knights and who really wasn't given an opportunity, so his reputation is forever tainted when it comes to North American hockey. You have Evgeny Dadanov, you have Nikita Gusev. These are all former KHL guys who came over to the NHL, and they're all sort of in different tiers. Obviously, Shipachev was the worst one. Panarin was the best one. This is what they did in comparison to Andrei Kuzmenko. Kuzmenko was over a point per game at an older age than Panarin was when he was in the KHL. Panarin came over, he played with Kane, had 77 points in 80 games, he is an absolute superstar. Let's rule out the idea of Panarin being the comparable player over here. We can focus on Evgeny Dadanov as well, because this is another name that a lot of people had been thrown around as a potential comparable player. And for Dadanov, I mean, a lot of people like to take a look at Dadanov and just kind of meme him because he wasn't traded from Vegas to Anaheim, but this was a player that got 70 points in the Florida Panthers system a few years ago. He also had 65 points in 74 games the first year after coming back over from Russia. Now, his point-per-game number was a bit better than Andre Kuzmenko's for SKA St. Petersburg, but there still is a good level of talent there that Dadanov had, and he displayed it at the NHL level immediately coming over. You also have Nikita Gusev, who gets memed on a lot because his Devils tenure really wasn't all too great comparative to what we thought he would be able to do. He was a phenomenal hockey player at the Olympic Games for the Olympic athletes from Russia and in the KHL. He had 82 points in 62 games played the year he decided to play his final before coming over to North America. And back when he did that, I mean, the guy was also 26 years old, so this guy was supposed to be quote-unquote better than what Kuzmenko is right now. But what a lot of people don't like to remember when it comes to Nikita Gusev and the stint he had in the NHL was that the first year he played in New Jersey, which wasn't a good team, by the way, he had 44 points in 66 games. Like, that is really good. Do the math. 44, divvy 66, multiplied out by 82. Gusev was playing at a 55-point pace on a bad team, fresh out of Russia. That is not bad. And if anybody, like Andre Kuzmenko, for example, who's signing a one-year deal in Vancouver because that's the amount of years that he's able to sign on this contract, is coming over and he gets 40, 50 points, that's a win right there. You don't need to get Artemi Panarin under a point per game, a Calder winner, to say that he is a good hockey player. Dadanov had a 60-point season and a 70-point season after that. Gusev had a 44-point season that was on pace for 56 points or 55 points or whatever it was. You have Shipachev who didn't have his opportunity to shine, so that's unfortunate. But still, Andrei Kuzmenko, if he can be a shade of any of these guys, is going to be okay. I think for me, if I want a safe estimate, I'll say minimum 30 points. If it gets 10 goals, 20 assists, I feel like that's a good enough player to justify signing him. But I could realistically see this guy get upwards of, let's say, maybe 50, 55 points if everything goes right. If he plays in the power play and he sticks around in that spot, he really loves playing in Gretzky's office and setting up his teammates in front for a one-timer. I'm going to be interested in seeing if he can set up Bo or Petey or Brock, if they're still here with that kind of pass, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Kuzmenko and how good you think he's going to be as well. There are a lot of things to go over, comparable players, Dadanov, Gusev, etc. You could talk about all the things that the scouts and Rutherford himself and the agent Dan Milstein said, not to mention his former teammate and Pod Golzin, but at the end of the day, we just gotta wait till 2022-2023 before we can see what Kuzmenko does on NHL ice. So, talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vidishraj Rolls 99. And bye.